this whole sticky mouse back. Third charge. And they're just being simple. Yeah. Use it. Yeah. Any ideas? Well, glue traps are horrific, and I've read them about in, in the, the book there. There have been scientific projects, um, the one in New Zealand, where the scientists set up putting out glue boards, getting mice to run on them, and sit and watch them and stop watches, and then you can see how long it takes to die. 24 hours. 24 hours, you know, it's just outrageous. And in fact, every person who uses a glue trap commits a criminal offence, in my view, because the Animal Welfare Act uh, makes it an offence to cause um, a domestic animal uh, cruelty, but it also applies to captive animals. You can't get any more captive than a mouse on a glue trap. Um, and I've had calls in the middle of the night from a woman who was in hysterics because she put a glue trap under the kitchen and then there was a mouse in it and it was screaming. And I said, what? she said, what can I do? She was right up the other side of London. I said, Pick, a board, pick the board up, take it outside and drop a brick on it. That's the only thing you can do. You can't leave it on there, because it will die, it'll just die really slowly. Um, she said she couldn't possibly touch it. So, uh, but she had a carer, and uh, I made her give me his address. I rang him in the middle of the night, and I told him to go over there and kill that mouse with something um, as quickly as he could. And if he didn't, I would report him to the police because he bought the glue trap. And he went over and did the job anyway. But um, I think we've got a good chance of getting them banned because the British pest control industry, I, I met the chief executive some years ago, the previous chief executive, he said, well, we don't like them. We don't think the public should have them. He said, we think they should be a, a, a weapon of last resort for a professional pest controller or keep it in his van. He said, but... Um, there's no case in giving the public because they don't know what to do with them. And you can buy them in pound shops, packets of them, and they are horrific. Well, can I just add yes, that, yes, that please I do. work for the um, Humane Society International, and John's been really helpful to us in developing our uh, campaign to get a ban on, on food traps in the UK. They're already banned in New Zealand and um, Ireland, so we've had a precedent. And um, I just wanted to sort of add on to the end of John's comments, a sort of a happy uh, trajectory of this issue is that we've been campaigning at um, wholesalers uh, who, who sell on to retailers these food traps. Um, and we've so far had about 215 stores um, have voluntarily withdrawn them from sale, um, including some really, really big wholesalers like Booker's, um, Macro, and some others. Um, and basically, as soon as we presented the evidence and showed them the cruelty that these traps caused, they just said, oh gosh, we didn't know they did that. So I think there is hope and also as John said the uh, British Pest Controllers Association are backing our campaign as well for other stuff. Um, and uh, you know for a ban, a, a legal ban as well. So I think I totally agree with you know, I think it's only a matter of short matter of time before we get the ban yeah. in the UK. I think that uh, um, I think that Anna Malid, in fact, was responsible for persuading Robert Dias not to take um, blue traps and so on. I've, no, I've never seen them in Robert Dias, and uh, hopefully uh, that still is true. Yeah, I'm very schooled. Really, I'm at the moment. I mean, Anna Malid just the stuff I've heard of you who interact with the scientific research for schools, and I'd love to have a further chat with you because I think one of the major things we've got to do is encourage people like the Woodland Trust and the RSPB to consider alternative ways of whatever conceived problem that they do think they have with gross world. And I think we need to join with this group um, about no kill for pest control and see if we can get some large landholders to agree to do some research on using much better methods on a larger scale. So there's a really clear alternative to plantation growers in terms of trees being mm -hmm. able to the gray squirrels. But just quickly to add two things, the argument about bringing back gray squirrels is a nonsense. You kill the gray squirrels, the reds aren't going to come back. No, but true. also there's a huge show campaign because the European Union is about to debate whether gray squirrels can be put on the invasive species list. Which means that thousands and thousands will be, uh, and they're already being slaughtered, it's going to be on an eradication part of the year. And there are petitions around about now that it's also on the way. The invasive species um, business is, is ridiculous. You know, if you look at the Wildlife and Countryside Act, there's a whole list of species.
species, animals, birds, insects, plants, which are invasive species. I, I deny they are invasive species. They didn't get here on their own. Human beings brought them here. Great squirrels were brought here to replace the red squirrels that were dying out because of disease. And then you turn around and say, oh, there's no red squirrels left. Oh, well, then we've got to protect those. And let's start bashing the grey squirrel, which was everybody wanted at one stage. So it, it is fashionable now. There's a great book um, called The New Wild, which if you if you Google it, have a look at that. Because that's guy, uh, Fred Pierce, is a renowned conservationist. And he is saying we should celebrate these invasive species. He said they, you know, some of them do a little bit of damage, but almost all of them enhance nature. And you know, nature is dying out and is being replaced by other animals. All the ships that empty their ballast in the, in the thing, there's loads of creatures in there which are in, finish up in the our seas and are invasive. But it's not invasion. You don't come rolling up the troops in hel uh, up the beaches in helmets with machine guns. You know, these are just brought here by us. And we have a duty, I think, if they have to be destroyed in any way, to make sure that it's totally humane. This great squirrel article here um, says, actually admits, you know, you're going to kill the great squirrels, their babies are going to die in the nest. <coughs> so it's, it's, that's not a humane death, uh, and we're supposed to be humane. So these are all big issues now, uh, and if we can get into um, the pest control world, <coughs> and I've been invited to, it's not as if we're bullying them ever, I think. Um, if we can get into that world with a, a recognisable number of people all around the country that are perhaps not doing the jobs themselves, but they're giving people advice. They may be distributing animalized advice sheets on these various deterrents that are available. So anyone who thinks that you know they can get stuck into this pest control world um, maybe, you know, we could get, if anybody makes stands, for instance, you know, we could, we could take one up to uh, the next, next Pest Tech magazine um, um, exhibition uh, and make an impact. Because, you know, the things they, as Bob Dylan said, things they are a changing. Um, I believe that antiquarians are sold generally as being very and I feel very strongly there ought to be a ban on them being so readily available in you know, most high streets. Talk about babies dying in nests, one of my neighbours used anticoagulants to get rid of the rats in their garden. An owl ate one of the rats that died, all their you know, young owls died in nests of starvation. And they are so readily available, I don't even have any idea what the implications are of that use. And, and I say they're just so cheap, you know, that was really necessary. So the next question is, I live in the country, my loft is full of rats, I see them fell in when they get through the pipes. I didn't, I still don't kill them, but I really would like a solution to, to the rats that are okay, right well, we'll, we'll talk afterwards. Yeah. Talk, there, there is always a solution. Not sometimes it's not easy. Yeah. Um, and rats are, you know, clever. They are. Uh, and they're also ruthless. Very they're more ruthless, ruthless than human beings. Um, but rat poison, this anticoagulant poison, that is beginning to be brought under control because um, the, um, what are they called? Health and Safety Executive have set up this scheme now for each uh, portion of the of people that deal with anticoagulant poisons now have to abide by a very strict code of conduct. Uh, they try and get around it. For instance, you're not supposed to use anticoagulant poisons outside buildings. But the pest control industry is is, uh, uh, is horrified at that because you know all these boxes you see round the buildings, mm -hmm. so they've managed to get uh, permission to keep using it near buildings, which is common really. But you know there is pressure. It's all coming from the European Union, which is that which is now calling for the invasive species to be killed. You know that's the trouble with these big political organisations, you know, they come up with a good idea, so oh, that's good, I agree with that, and the next minute they're battering you back down with something else. But uh, um, I've never failed uh, in a rat job, never failed, whether it's inside or outside. 
there is always a way to come up with a new one. Because we've, my neighbours, we, we've got, they've got rats under their floorboards and they've had them there for years and they're getting up into their, because they've got an extension with uh, cavity walls, they're getting up into the roof of that. And they had three, so far they've had three pest control companies in and they haven't solved it. Um, they went away on holiday and I, I went around and squirted get off spray, which is a humane animal detail, into their, um, uh, their uh, wheel, what they call bricks, cover these uh, air bricks. Yeah, right there. Um, squirt it in there. Now, you know, apparently this is now coming under control. Um, they don't hear them now. Um, they smell them, but they don't hear them. So the smell may be that they're all dead, of course, probably the previous best control of um, pretty poisoning. Um, but I've bought a, a leaf blower now, and I hope to be able to use that to blow this get off spray into air vents um, because that will go around and rats, they depend on their own scent shells to go everywhere. If you make it uncomfortable and there's no food source available, they will leave. It's the food source which is the, the biggest temptation. Mm -hmm. <coughs> um, yeah, I